All right. Um, so I'm stepping in for one of the lightning talks that wasn't able to make it. Um, so my name is Sebastian McKenzie, and I'm going to be talking about an experimental optimizing JavaScript compiler uh, that we've been working on at Facebook uh, to explore areas of optimization in our application initialization. Um, so the project currently consists of two Sebastian M's. Um, it's probably the most confusing name duo ever. I constantly get uh, confused sometimes on Twitter with Sebastian. Um, even though we have the same first name, similar last names, and are heavily involved in React and JavaScript, we're two different people. <laughs> so what's the problem that we're trying to address? Well, we have a lot of code that's executed on application startup that's very expensive. Uh, not only that, but the same initialization work is done every single time the JavaScript is loaded. So there's a lot of work that's happening twice. So if you open the same page twice, like the same initialization code will be executed. So it's kind of a lot of wasted effort there. So what's the solution? Well, we can execute the JavaScript and then create a snapshot of the final state so after all the initialization code has been ran, and then build that snapshot and then restore it on the client. Um, so we can generate the minimum amount of instructions to bring the client up to date with the changes that the JavaScript made. Um, so this may sound a bit confusing, but here's an example. Um, so say that you have this snippet. Uh, so it has a lot of indirection. You're calling uh, a prototype property, so you're calling for each, and then it's calling the closure multiple times. Um, and then it's constructing the instance and setting a global. Um, so there's a lot of tiny overhead with like when you do all of this, um, they can really add up over time, especially like in the life cycle of an application. Um, so we can actually execute this code and determine what the like the minimal required steps are to get to this state. Um, so here you can see that we create the two objects, set their prototypes, and then make them global. Um, so this is all that's required for the code to have the same effect as the original. Um, so how do we do this? Um, so we utilize a decent amount of infrastructure from um, Babel. Um, so if you're here for my talk last year, I talked a bit about how Babel was going to become like a general platform for building JavaScript tooling. Um, and this is kind of just like a natural progression and testament to that. Um, so first we pass the code with the Babel parser. Um, then we execute the code in our own custom JavaScript engine. Um, so this is an entire implementation of the JavaScript language, which means that we can do a lot of really intricate like deserialization and optimizations. Um, so once the code has finished running, we serialize the effects that it had on the global state. So we call like um, all the global uh, globals and then uh, crawl all the objects and then link together like prototypes, properties, and closures. Uh, then we pass the serialized results to the Babel code generator where it generates vanilla JavaScript. So one place where this can be applied is on JavaScript libraries. So React is an excellent example of a library that does a lot of metaprogramming on initialization. So what are the effects if we compile React with this mysterious compiler? So here's a flame wrap of the current React production build. Um, so this is just loading the page and then like rendering uh, some HTML. Um, so you can see all the purple um, just below the yellow line. Uh, this is, as you can see, there's like a lot of work happening here. And this is just like initialize React. But what about the build after? So as you can see, there's a massive like decrease in total execution time. Um, you can't actually really see the execution time here, but there it is highlighted in red. Um, so in total, this is like a three times decrease in total execution time of actually loading React Core. Um, so this like shaving like 50 milliseconds off your application initialization. Um, is no real laughing matter. Um, and imagine this applied to like all your JavaScript and you can kind of begin to see how all of this can like build up. So, whoa, this is amazing. Um, so let's take a look at some of the actual like before and after builds so you can kind of actually get a better understanding of kind of what this is doing since it kind of seems like black magic. Um, so right here we basically just have like the default React build. Um, so as we kind of scroll through we see like a lot of um, code that is really only used to initialize. Um, so this is a Browserify build, so here you've got like the require implementation that um, kind of like builds up the exports. Um, and then you just have like the, the kind of all the modules uh, like that. Um, and as you can see, like there's a lot that kind of like happens on initialization. Um, so there's a lot of data structures that are built up uh, that can be quite costly, at least when they're kind of done over a wide scale. Um, and so, and this is the generated build. Um, so what this is, is 
after all that is executed, we then just have like, this is just all the plain objects that represent everything. Um, and so here we can just see all the closures. Uh, and then we can go down to uh, where we set like the properties. Uh, so here we can see like the objects that React uses internally to like track metadata about like the different attributes. Um, and then there's like factory functions to create objects to like optimize their creation. Um, and so you end up with this bundle that when you execute it, it's doing very little. It's, it's just declaring all the functions and setting all the properties, and it's not like doing any like funky magic. Uh, so when can you have it? Um, not sure. So this is currently, <laughs> So this is kind of like really experimental. We're still kind of investigating ways to improve application like initialization. Um, there's no guarantee that this will actually like become a thing that actually gets out there, but we'll definitely be investigating it further. Um, so thanks for listening. Um, I hope if, hopefully I have some good news in the future. If not, hopefully this has given you some insight into kind of how we approach looking at uh, certain problems to improve performance or just make our products better. So thank you.